Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Dream Daddy. Fen's here! Hi! And, uh, we, I guess we're just continuing on into the third date with Craig, but first we've got to do a few other things. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall into my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound. They can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I gently knock on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Well, we're going to pressure her. Did something happen? Hmm. No, nothing happened. Go away. Something must have happened. Amanda. Get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Wow. Wow. What has her so upset? Wow. <laughs> she seemed fine earlier. <laughs> she's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she's definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything been going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and st takes her still freezer-burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda I have hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream. It was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a second? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It's a whole cake. <laughs> it's like I love that cake so much. It's like a haggard cake. Right? Sorry you're sad. <laughs> but I support you 100%. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad, so I had to start over and... This is beautiful. It's strawberry. Ooh, I could go Ooh, for a strawberry, strawberry cake. cake. I know, right? <laughs> We're both thinking the same thing. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks and service up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. Also, bold of us to assume our cake is delicious. Right? What well, is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. 
Oh no. I'm listening. Uh -huh. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. Oh no. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We didn't pay attention at all. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, hang on. The best friend. Okay. All right. <laughs> She's very happy about that. Oh, I just had a heart attack. <laughs> okay, you got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P, and I just thought it was all in my head for a while. But then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace, and Noah all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night, and they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Also, how many... So she knows a bunch of, like, Graces and Mackenzies, and, like, everybody's got initials. Well, I think there was only <laughs> one Grace, but there was... Oh, yeah. One Grace, an extra Mackenzie or something like that. Yeah. It, like, Jesus. Uh. Yikes. <laughs> So, another important piece of information is, uh, god, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the worst. Oh, I do like their dynamic. I'm not going to lie. I would absolutely oh. say, so are you, to, oh. to my kid. <laughs> it's like, you're a bad liar. I so mean, are you. To be fair, if you have this type of relationship with our kids, like that's a good thing. So <laughs> This is a very good relationship. Anyways, the only person I told about the crush was Emma R. And she promised not to tell anybody. And I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day, I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall. Damn, I want nachos. <laughs> and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. Mm. High school sucks. So I tell them, Never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we're out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Ugh. Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court, and who do I see there? But Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. <gasps> no. Yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R is just, um, Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the. Uh, gossipy one. Oh my god, look at number three. The bed too? <laughs> Gossip one. I know. Uh, no, no, that's, no, that's me. I know. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nachos, I might add, which only further contributed to the shitty day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat, asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R, asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and... Sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? Actually, is isn't that much. But uh, the first one. Okay. Ooh, okay, get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Meta pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously mm. long string of text messages. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, I, I can. I cannot believe that. 
I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I am trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for, like, months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red, and then... Wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are, there are red receipts. I don't know what red receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because at least she's being kind of reasonable. And I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. <laughs> Doesn't know what a screenshot is. <laughs> There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everyone else, but... Emma R's been there since Mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected I almost can't take it. What uh, could I possibly say to help? Anyways... That's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know. It's pretty dumb. Mm. Not dumb. To be fair, that's not dumb. That's a horrible thing to have happen. <laughs> Ugh, high school is the worst. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time? Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Uh. Oh, I don't have an answer for this one. Does it just say whatever one? It doesn't have an answer for that. It literally ends on the it's not dumb part. Damn, now I'm like wishing we did all the bad things so that we could get the bad Amanda ending. Yeah, I guess it, yeah. nothing matters here. Okay. No. Uh, High school sucks. Honey, high school sucks. You make friends with people just because they're there. When you're still leaving, living in your hometown, there's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. But once you go to college, and once you get out into the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people, and it's going to be easier to make friends with people who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. And some of them yeah, only friendship. <laughs> and some of them only last a little while, and that's okay too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at art school. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Oh, I remember this. This is the exact Any, same oh. thing that he said, and I think we chose they're not really your friends last time. Yeah, I think it's, I think no matter what we pick there, it's because we're already on the path to the good ending. Because if you say that it's dumb, she's like, yeah, I guess, and then she walks off to her room. You don't even get these options. Well, uh, so interestingly, so, I, got, I got a little thing spoiled, like the good ending, she goes to college. I don't think she goes to college in the bad ending. Oh no, I haven't done through I haven't gone through the bad ending, so now I'm really oh, dang it, now I'm I, curious. I mean we can always restart <laughs> No after this Craig day. We could we could do a little recording where we just record the Amanda stuff. But maybe we'll we'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah.
All right. We need to get through more dates. It's you. Right. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes? Thank you. You're always welcome. Yeah. Love you, Amanda. Oh. She just, already said it. Yeah. I don't have to. <laughs> ah. All right. Make my job easier. The one line that they recorded for that. <laughs> You've got debt. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to make a save here. So you did get a message. Yes. Not necessarily. I don't think it's about the third date, but we'll see. Well, well. well no, because you have to. You have to go in for the third date. Right. Oh, I forgot. I remember what this is. Oh, it's the children. Yeah. So that's you. I, I gotta talk to myself. Hello, Amanda's dad. It's no, me. I, no. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You do. <laughs> it's me, your favorite friend, Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Oh man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still strong. Strong. I'm strong. <laughs> ha, don't I know it. Say, I've been reading up about whey protein. Do you use that at all? I figured it would help me develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. <laughs> My children are having a tea party and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Physical invitation to follow. <laughs> cool. I'll. I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. I guess we're attending that party. <laughs> yep. Also, also the clearly, Dad Manda is enough of a disguise that the kids can't figure it out. It's true. Yeah. Coffee time. You know, Dad's love coffee. Gonna brew myself something black as midnight on a moonless night. I put on a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad, ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. Gonna tackle it head on. No, are you ready for the thing we were gonna do today? The thing that you promised you'd do? Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. <laughs> Just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over, and you don't even read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. The tea party, Dad. Nope, I don't remember that. Craig's kids, that hand-drawn invitation. Amanda walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper, inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. <laughs> They spelled cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. I do have going outside pants. <laughs> <laughs> I can go outside <laughs> in sweatpants. Nothing's stopping me. I feel like you, you've just kind of turned into this dad. It's not <laughs> looks wise. Dad, uh, I'll just see you. I'll see you in a minute. Uh... <laughs> um, well, oh I God. feel like we're fucking authority, right? Sure. Fuck authority. What did I say about the pants? I'm a rebel, sweetie. Whatever, I'm sure it'll be fine. Hello, thank you for coming to our party. I do my best bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a cur curtsy. This way, please! Briar and Hazel lead us to a small table of tiny chairs. Some are oh, occupied no. by stuffed animals, and Matt and his daughter, Carmen Sita, are here too. Oh, I forgot there's more. I don't remember how, what Matt's voice is. I feel like I, I forget him every time. Oh. Whatever voice I use for him. I'm, I'm just making them up every time I go. That's why we're switching off I, so I that we too. can't be blamed. I do too. <laughs> Matt That's raises too. a comically small <laughs> plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. Uh -oh. How's the tea? The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. I taste a hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmen Sita. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. Did you just wake up? <laughs> uh, no, why? 
<laughs> Those are inside pants. <laughs> Amanda laughs. <laughs> Please have a seat. I sit it's down a lot between, of acting for you. In this I know. <laughs> between Amanda and Matt. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Oh, God. There's another one. Uh, uh, Daisy, Daisy's Brian's kid. Brian's kid. Oh, oh. Brian's the boastful dad. Gotcha. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to us. Sorry we're late. Daisy made, Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. Ha! <laughs> Whipped. Amanda punches <laughs> me on the shoulder. See? Oh, so you approve of cargo shorts when they're on Brian, but not when they're on me. Dad, you're embarrassing me at the tea party. This is a high-class affair. Eh? But... Also, you're not in cargo shorts, you're in sweatpants. Sweatpants, yeah. No, uh, Brian is in sweatpants. No, or, or cargo shorts, no, sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because he... Yeah. yeah. You're, not, you're not wearing them, you're wearing sweatpants. Right, no one said we were wearing cargo shorts. No, 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 cause, yes, she just... Amanda, or he... The dad just said to Amanda, oh, so you approve of cargo shorts when they're on Brian, but not on me? Right, because we're not wearing cargo shorts. And she approved him wearing them because they're not sweatpants. I'm so confused now. Oh, just keep reading. <laughs> because, no. It's about to start. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules for some high tea. Now, if you all put on your designated tiaras. There are little tiaras sitting on everyone's plates. A except for Brian's. His, a, his is a softball helmet. Ow! Oh, we ran out of tiaras! It's a lot of tiaras to have anyway. <laughs> I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, your royalty, please act like it. Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off on and into the bushes. I'll get that later. Hey, everybody. Craig comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. Dad, is the tea ready? Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, steeping for a while now. Awesome! Would you girls like to serve your guest tea? No, thank you. We'd much appreciate our servant's help. Oh. Craig leans over to me. That's me. Craig places teacups in front of all of all of us and a single sandwich cookie onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm, awfully fluorescent for tea. I clink my teacup with mats and take a sip. Good lemonade. Hey. It's tea! Right. Very good tea. He wasn't far off with the lemongrass. I lean over right? to Amanda, who is happily enjoying her tea. So, hmm. what do we do at tea parties? We enjoy the splendors of upper-class upper society, Father. She takes a dainty bite out of her sandwich cookie. Marvelous. So, the meeting of princesses has been called to water! Hear, hear. But I'm a warrior princess, and I hunt and stuff, and I have, like, a really cool sword! Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. And I'll be rock star princess. I'm also Space Princess. Can there be more than one? Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a Space Princess, too. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Da! I guess that makes me... Ooh. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, rude boy princess. <laughs> <laughs> if I drop my crown on the floor, I'll make sure to pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> nice. I think I'll be l be landscaper and general con contracting princess. Of course oh you will God, be. Oh my God, Brian. Barista princess reporting for duty. Hey, everybody. CrossFit princess here. They don't even have fake personas that they can put on. They're just, that's their entire identities all the yes. time. Yes, it is. Not now, servant. If it weren't for the princess uprising, it would be you serving me. 
We sip tea for a little longer, and then the girls run off to fight dinosaurs as space rock star warrior princesses, I think. They grow up so fast. It was just yesterday that I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. Carmen Sita made me actually brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. <laughs> Pitfall? Your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was choice. Aw, uh, oh, thanks. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad we moved into this community. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know? I hadn't even realized, and I don't even know if Amanda does either, but I guess they're all right. All of the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. Yeah, because she's the 18-year-old cool kid, and they're all, like, 12. It's true. I'm so... At the at the oldest. <laughs> proud of her. You better not proud dad cry at this tea party, Jack. <laughs> I brought extra word jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time with a girl's play. The day rolls on and the girls all get tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them the best ones later. We all clean up and put away the tea sets and tables, then head out as Daisy and Carmen see to fall asleep on their dad's shoulders. Oh. oh Take it. care, guys. Thanks for coming! Bye, rude boy princess! <laughs> Never thought I'd say that line, and definitely not like that. Uh, you want dinner? <laughs> Nah, I filled up on cookies. Me too. I'm tired. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly mm. exhausting. But in a good way? But also in a kind of scary way. How so? I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't want to let them down. Is this because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? <laughs> I corrupted her dad. She secondhand smokes now. <laughs> well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role model. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Okay. Welcome. You it was a nice little interlude. Yeah. And you worried that you were going to be doing all the heavy lifting. Now I'm going to make a save. <laughs> and now yeah. we do Craig. Maybe literally. <laughs> Alright. Now, we haven't actually okay, so, done this, well, so this is all gonna be new. So, but, okay, so here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. What's... So, we're gonna just revert back to this save once we're done, right? Yes, I just made a save. So, once we're done Craig's third date, um, we'll probably go through the ending just to see Craig's ending, but next time we load, Craig will only be on date two, and we will move on to another dad. Right, and then we just keep moving from those saves. Yep. Doing the same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. Okay. So, hey, you know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. You might not have time to browse dad, but for what? Are, are you ready? Yep. And that's why they let you make a save there. Yep. Yep, yep. It took some time for our schedules to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. Oh my god, it's a camping trip. Of course it is. <laughs> he always stays so busy with work and the kids, but it's good to know that we'll just be able to spend some time relaxing together in nature. Since our first run, he's I managed three to go kids. on- three kids. Of course I know. he's busy. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it seems like the only time we get to hang out, but the added benefit is that I've seen a lot of improvement in my health. So, for the rest of all of the other dads, we're like slightly jacked dad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> slightly jacked jack. That's true. I was able to sift through the attic and find my old camping gear from college. Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags in the tent while he takes care of the food. So I will double check to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute now. If, if I've learned anything, you definitely don't want like super <laughs> old camping gear. <laughs> you learned that the hard way. I did. Our camping gear rained and our tent had holes apparently. And that was a thing. Anyway, uh, Amanda is going to be spending this weekend on a school trip to our nation's capital. She hasn't been away from home without me for longer than a day since she was 14. I hope she isn't feeling as nervous as, about it as I am. Can I read? Oops. Apparently not. Hey, Amanda Panda. Amanda's in the middle of sitting on top of her luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Hey, Pops. 
Ready for your skirt? Tri- ready for your trip? <laughs> One- <sighs> Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? That seems like a lot for two days. Oh, it's all of my camera equipment. Lenses, tripod, flash, all that. How oh, did yeah, she fit a tri- How did she fit a tripod in luggage? That's what I want to know. Like, she's clearly not able to. She's sitting on it to zip everything up. Right, but like, she has something long enough to have a tripod? How big is this luggage? She could have, a, like, they've got smaller ones that you can fold up better. I guess. Yeah. Are you even going to have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots for my series on, natu- on national monuments. Oh, what's the series about? It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney princesses as founding fathers. <laughs> what? That's kind of amazing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Nobody likes those. I'm taking portraits of my friends. To be fair, that would actually be hilarious to the Disney princesses as founding fathers. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'm going to be in the woods, out there in nature, you know, roughing it. Just me and Mother Nature. The old Madridy trees. Are you going to be all right on your own? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. Oh, it's all right. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates on who just got voted off international haunted house murder... Or, er, murders. Hunters. Well... I'll miss you. And for the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of ordinate stairs by a ghost. They were really beautiful stairs. Amanda finishes zipping up the big suitcase and lugs it next to the door of her bedroom. She turns around and gives me a big hug. Relax, Dadtron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh, that, that's miserable. <laughs> oh, well, all right. It melts that's, all over you, and that'll yeah. wake you up. It'll be a sticky, horrible mess. It's true. Don't steal anything, okay? Since you asked nicely, fine. Promise. I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Craig's already strapped some camping gear on top of my modest but stylish car. He notices me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take it from me. Ooh. Okay, uh, such a gentleman. Such a gentleman? I almost had a case of the vapors there. (laughs) Never fear. These muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. (laughs) Oh, God. Jesus. Remember, it's your weekend to relax. Take it easy. I guess I can't argue with that. Everything good with Amanda? Yep. On her way to a school trip to Washington, D.C. Oh. What about your offspring? Already at Smashley's for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp on. Smashley? I load the rest of my stuff into Craig's car and we get in. Oh no. Oh, oh no. That's you. What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. Oh my god. Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... I... Try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away. Take all of your worries and blend them into a pulpy good vibes. Craig takes a deep breath. Do we have anything to listen to? Uh, all I had in my place is a series of CDs that guide you through a thorough and intense calisthenics workout. Do you want to listen to those? Oh no. Um... I'm just kidding. Craig hands me a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through page after page of kids sing-along CDs. <laughs> oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find, in the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. DJ Keg Stands Mega Mix Volume 1? <laughs> Made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. Why did you not just give the CD if it's the only CD and then it's not a kid's CD? Like, right? and he made it for the trip specific. <laughs> he made it for the trip specifically. But no, he made you thumb through the entire thing. <laughs> I th- popped My the God. CD into the car stereo and it's like I'm immediately transported to our old dorm room. Hit after hit plays and soon enough we're both happily scream singing the lyrics to each song as we fly down the hallway. This song was Carl's favorite. Carl, the third roommate. 
You brought that dog home one night and I couldn't pry you two apart. So we spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student roommate who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. And then we had a room inspection. That RA was so suspicious of us but could never prove anything. And Carl was just under a blanket. Bless that pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. The hours fly by as we belt out tunes and whatever non-existent key our voices register and Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. Feels good to be back out here. Real good. We park our car at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up our gear on our backs. I'm thankful that we've been working on my health over the past couple of weeks, otherwise I'd be dreading all the hiking that's about to happen. Craig looks intently at his phone. Oh, everything all right? Yep, just had to fire off one last work email. Craig pockets the phone and we start <laughs> off on the trail. <laughs> I would have done the wrong okay? pipe. It's relatively easy, but I know I would have been huffing and puffing at this point if we weren't for all the murder sprints. I look around me and take in all the tall trees and animal trips. And die, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay back there? There's no reception out here. Oh yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere will do that. I recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's face. But what if there's a problem? Ooh. Uh, there won't be. There won't be. It'll be fine. Come on, bud. Who's a relaxed boy? I don't know. Craig. I'm a relaxed boy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's my dude. This is like the biggest bromance ever. We keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops in his tracks. Maybe we should go back. We could find another campground that gets good cell phone reception. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking me in. My mind keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst-case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have a signal. I would have no way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring punch on the shoulder. I try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all and just focus on ourselves on this little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. Yeah, relaxing. Hmm. Mm. Craig looks at me directly, directly in the eyes. Wait, what? Looks what? me directly, directly. It's just directly twice. Oh, yeah, there's typos in this, yes. No distractions, no cell phone service. Just two dads relaxing out in the woods. We're gonna have some fun this weekend. Yeah, you are. Craig and I get back to marching. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite, and we're both glad to see what that we're the only people out here. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found it in my attic and already checked it for holes. It's seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. I dump the bag of fabric and pulls onto the ground. We unfold the tent in the desired spot. I hang Craig the stakes. We still know how to do this, right? Of course we do. We do not. <laughs> After 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad, in bad infomercial, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent should look like if you ask somebody to draw a picture of one with their eyes shut. Actually, the tent in the background looks a lot like the tent that flooded for us. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's just ours <laughs> oh was blue God. instead of orange. Oh my god. I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. <laughs> Sit out a couple of chairs at our cooking equipment, admiring our handiwork. Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock shall we grill our meats and drink our brews, for we hold dominion over this land. Verily, and uh, look at our camping chairs. Which we are going to sit on. So what's next on the camp's travaganza docket? 
Well, now that we have shelter settled, I guess time for us to do some exploring. There's a waterfall a little, a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could hike to. Oh, that sounds like fun, actually. Waterfall. I know. Let's get sounds hiking. Great. Craig and I venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. Craig reaches out an arm and stops me. Dude. Does that look like what I think it looks like? I look over at where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. That tree looks like a butt. (laughs) (laughs) That really tickled you. I need a second. (laughs) Is it because of how I said it or the line itself? (laughs) Little column A, little column B. (laughs) I'm so mature. (laughs) Oh. I can't get over how detailed it is. I examine the butt tree further. The <laughs> contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. I thought we were going to have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Craig hold back to, holds back a snicker. <laughs> I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. Jeez. Oh my god. I'm snickering now, too. Let us analyze this tree further. Oh, no. No. Craig, Craig and I share a huge belly laugh no. at our awful jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. Mm. We high five. Craig and I hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We point out old landmarks and that we remember back from our college days. I think we're getting close now. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I can hear water running. Damn, look at that. Oh, nice. Cresting over a hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall spilling into a large body of water that runs into a river. Mouths agape with the genuine beauty of this place, we go to investigate. The old waterfall. It's gorgeous. Nature's so rad. Peering further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Think we could jump off it like the old days? Ha! Huh. This old dad is happy here on dry land. Looks oh. Looks like you could climb right up over there. We didn't even bring swimming trunks. What are you talking about? Craig immediately begins taking his clothes off. Hell yeah, oh. he does. Mm. Welp. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is look at his butt. Gotcha. I can't help but sneak a peek. That, that is a good butt. Craig is turns this around. The tree? <laughs> Craig turns around suddenly. <laughs> he catches me looking. I do a lot of glute workouts. I immediately turn away, blushing. Oh, we got eggplants. Mm-hmm. You coming or what? <laughs> In a bit. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know about this, dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When he realizes I'm not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. We lived together for years, and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. Mm. Uh, Let's put on a show. If the clothes are coming off, then it's someone's birthday. Craig gives me the wolf whistle. I turn and give my booty a good spank. That one's for you, big boy. I take my shirt (laughs) off and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. Put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb up to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff and into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled some stunts in college that I'm honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't be bringing home bringing him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Oh. Craig looks me in the eyes. Too thick. Just jump. 
Craig cannonballs off the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from under the water. Woo! He treads water and looks up at me. You coming or what? Don't think. Just jump. How are you supposed to j just not think? I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible. <laughs> My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think. Just... I run off the edge, trying to do my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really graceful belly flop. I hit oh, the water with a loud hurts. slap. I resurface to find Craig giggling. I rate that... Oh. I rate that belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I playfully splash water at Craig. Are you sure about that? Oh. I splash him again. You've given me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast. <laughs> he launches another wave <laughs> of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in the corner. Uh... Oh, no. What? How do you not have this option? What option? D no, the, the the date does not have the answer. Hang on. Uh-oh. Hang on, I gotta find another one real fast. Uh, okay. Uh, dunk him. Okay. I lunge for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. I summon all of my dad's nice. strength to lift Craig out of the water. Hey! And I drop him down for the splash. Craig <laughs> bounces back out of the water. My turn. Oh no. It seems like Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me with his clearly superior muscles <laughs> and quite literally tosses me across the water. I emerge from the water, oh. devastated. You think I did all those pull-ups just so I can look good with my shirt off? Nah, bro. These arm cannons are dad launchers. Craig does a playful flex for me. Damn. Craig, truce, please. Hmm. Craig thinks about it. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There's peace. <laughs> Man, that jump was such an adrenaline rush. Not so scary now, huh? Race you to the top. Okay. We run all the way back up slick rocks and cannonball off the waterfall again. What a rush. Th see, running like on the rocks, I'd be so scared of just slipping on the rock. And man, yeah. that's a bad gash waiting to happen. <laughs> like, it wouldn't yeah. be bad, but it would be like a huge gash on your leg. And then it's like, ah, it okay, I'm done. Mm hmm. Or like an elbow cut. And then it's like, mm, okay. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good form on that one. Want to go again? Okay, so now what you're supposed to do is jump until you can't jump anymore, and then it says for extra points, push for one more jump. Oh, so just keep do keep jumping? Yeah. Okay. With the same energy we had in our youth, we climb back up to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure looks incredibly graceful as I belly flop into the water. <laughs> Phew, man. This is fun. Got one more in you? I live for danger. It takes us a little more time, but we get to the waterfall and both do our best running jumps into the water below because it's exercise and Craig's all about exercise. Yeah. And like, yeah, this rush of it. <laughs> all right. I think that's my limit. We should get going back back before it gets too dark. No, one more. All right. Are you kidding? I've never felt more alive. All right, bro. You sure? It's my time to jump. I scurry up the rocks one more once more and do another classic can cannibal. Wow, this is so fun. I'm getting kind of cold. Want to go back to the camp now? Ah, uh, so he gets cold and then we like get close for warmth. I guess, yeah. Uh, uh, um, I think, I think you can go back. Hang on. Let me look. Yeah, I think we go back now. Okay. I'm done, I'm done. We should probably head back. We put we go to put our clothes back on and notice that they're soaking wet. 
Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. Uh, it's okay. We'll get a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some dinner going. Sopping wet, we hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes and tinfoil. You ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling into the relaxation station, and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it from here. Craig cooks now? I remember his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved and have trouble believing the thing he just oh said. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Jesus. No. At least let me start the fire. Sure. Let me just grab my matches. There's no matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. He rummages around in his bag, pulling things out and checking every pocket. I don't know. Uh-oh. I know I packed it. Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. This is why you bring a lighter. <laughs> why Why bring matches? Why even put that up to fate? Just bring a lighter. <laughs> My stomach grumbles and now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. We really needed to get the fire started. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We're smart guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I've watched plenty of survival programs on TV. If a naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. We need to get some wood. I just to the trees around us. There's no shortage of that. Oh. And some tinder. We can make that work. And then I think some ancient aliens are then supposed to come by and give us advanced technology. Or innovate our house. Depends on the show. <laughs> Craig and I gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until we have all the materials that could conceptually make a passable looking campfire. Just said fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is just now setting and a cool breeze rustles over the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work quick. I've done this in the past and I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. It's really hard to start a fire without anything. Mm -hmm. Any way I can help? Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. Ooh. Okay, go overboard with compliments. Go, okay. You're really giving that fire the business. You're an amazing, hardworking father with a steady work ethic and everyone loves you. Your daughters think you're a superhero and the neighborhood dads respect you immensely. Also, your butt looks great. Bro, stuff. You'll make me cry. We got eggplants. <laughs> okay, okay. Don't want to hear tears putting out the fire. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon, we have an, a nice little fire going. I don't think moss is something that you want to try to lay it on fire. It's generally pretty wet, actually. Well, let this be. <laughs> the dad dating sim. Way to go, man. We're regular old outdoorsy fellas. Hooray for not dying. I take a seat in one of the lawn chairs Craig brought and cozy up to the fire, oh. warming up my hands. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. Look at how dinner's capitalized. Right. I watch as Craig stokes the fire and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the scent of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly leans, sears two steaks in a pan he's been heating up on the fire, cracking thyme and crushed ginger over it while basting them both in butter. Ooh. Wow, I didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest I ever saw him get in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet onto dry ramen and eating it straight up. Why? No! no. When did this happen? He used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. Oh, no! Oh, God, no! I grew up, I guess. He got tired of eating terrible food. I think these are just about ready. Craig puts the steaks into a paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach over for one, but Craig oh. smacks my hand away. Dude, let them rest. It'll be more flavorful that way. That's not the reason you let them rest, but okay. 
I patiently returned to my seat, eyeing those steaks longingly this is the from dude a distance. Who, this is the dude who ate cereal with beer. It's true. Let him, this is a big upgrade. Let him have his thing. <laughs> they smell incredible. Craig prepares a side salad for us, in the, and in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese onto a freshly chopped greens. He plates it next to a generous pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. Oh, fuck Since yeah. it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Mm -hmm. Everything tastes okay? Oh. I'm in heaven. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Jesus. So, so hard to not go back to that. Is it? Uh, I feel like it would be very easy. Oh, wait, to not go back to Oh, okay. There's a yeah. double negative. I mean, that's a lot of burrito, even for me. And my favorite food literally is burrito. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that wouldn't be that difficult to avoid. <laughs> Look at you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how much you've gotten your life together. Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. I'm glad you think that. I glance at Craig while he picks out his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. A sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks exhausted. I don't know. You okay? Yeah. Come on, dude. I've known you for so l for long enough to see when you're down. I'm tired, bro. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. Oh. It can't be easy. I have to. For my girls. I volunteer at their school. I cook healthy meals for them. I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And when they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way? <laughs> that, and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you dry. If that's what it takes to raise them well, then it's worth it. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from here, but you gotta take care of yourself, too. I do, though. I eat right, and exercise, and... That's not what I mean. You're too little butter on too much toast, you know? What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but you can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter, too. It just... I know I can provide for my family, and if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing oh, right no. by them. But... I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's like, it's never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, I even feel guilty about being out here. Oh god, I feel this so deep in my soul. Mm -hmm. Craig... You're trying your best, and you're doing an amazing job. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would oh, still man. deserve happiness. Do I, though? <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate, he's hardworking, he's relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. And I'm a stone-cold murderer. <laughs> If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Come on. I brought dessert. It's just a can of whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you going to use the campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? What? I know little to nothing about cooking. Nice. Craig pulls out marshmallows. Well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? That's uh, the one time I really like chocolate is on s'mores. Is it? Yeah. It's good to know. I think the more important question is, how do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to just completely oh. blacken the marshmallows. I, that is a valid way to make s'mores. <laughs> oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but the gooey center is preserved. Yes. 
Fair. I'm not even a marshmallow fan, but I do like <laughs> s'mores. Brutish. Craig throws a marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. Oh, damn. Pro move. We used to be able to do that at a great distance against the wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice and I'll be competitive again. Craig and I sit in the warm glow of the campfire, watching embers float up towards the sky. Stars are so much brighter out here. Oh. Yeah. I miss this, Jack. Me too. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually clamber into the tent. Oh. Recall into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag. Wait. Where's the other sleeping bag? I look around for a second. Oh. Oh no. I must have left it at home. It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry. I'll just oh. curl up over here. No way. Here. Craig gives it the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. Night, bro. Good night, bro. I roll over and we face away from each other. Without a blanket, it's really cold. I shiver, and without realizing it, I find myself nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he won't mind. He turns over, and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. I turn over, trying to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from my own. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. His hand finds a place on my waist. I'm not sure who leans in first, but suddenly we're kissing. We look at each other, my heart racing. Oh, Craig... I got strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. <laughs> this is so funny with your <laughs> reading of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of glad that I'm the one who gets to be <laughs> him for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, <laughs> I'm me having, too. I'm having fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> I run my hands through his hair, then down his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so secure. You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. I smile, chasing the lines of his hip with my finger. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. Goddamn. And then it fades to black. Date complete. S rank. Hell yeah. So all three S ranked means that uh, we get the best ending possible for him. Mm hmm. Whew. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Jack. Be cool. Amanda walks in through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Mm. Off to a good start. Something fishy. Rats. Uh, sorry, sweetie. It's the feds. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. Well, if they think they're going to take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. So are you. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where her present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's something special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be a, a nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers! This is all 19 seasons! Oh god. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. <gasps> what? <laughs> there's... Mm, there's something wrong about this particular image. And that's just because I'm a bad person. 
No, no. <laughs> the way they all slide in and then her face. It's just... Mm. Right? I'm just like... Mm. It should be the thumbnail. No, the thumbnail's gotta be Craig. With a shirt off. That's pretty good, though. Right? Because, you know, That's we gotta... True. We gotta make That's sure true. it's uh, perfect and, and mm -hmm. clickbaity. I don't know, this is pretty clickbaity. <laughs> you told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? I don't even know how you would make a mac and cheese bar. Yes, you, you like have macaroni and cheese. Down to the type of mac. So there's okay. So the, wait, hold on. So there's different types of 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 pasta, and then what? I presume probably different types of melted cheese that you pour on top of it, and then toppings. I guess so. I guess so. When I hear when I hear mac and cheese bar, I just think you get a ton of toppings to choose from. But yeah, I guess yeah. I guess that's how this is. And hmm. then there's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I hate ice cream cake. Oh. I really do. The best part are the crunchies in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, alright? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. She doesn't have friends, remember? That's true, they all left her. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. All one of them. I should make the rounds and make sure everybody's having a good time. But first, no, because the only Mac friends are apparently the, the 14 year olds and under. It's true. Um, so I'm going to skip through most of these dad conversations because we've seen all of them already. Um, okay. The only one that I'm going to pause on and we should read is Damien's because we've never seen Damien's um, regular one before. Yeah, because we completed his ending. Yeah, and then Craig will obviously uh, be the last one. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to pass through all this because we've seen all of this before. Yeah. Uh, all of this apparently will be different once we go on to uh, um, dates with all of the dads as well. Oh, The only time I've ever done it is with double dates on all the dads. So, Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we've done all this before. If you want to see this, uh, go watch our... Um, um, Oh. Live stream the first episode. Ah. <laughs> Come on, Robert doesn't say anything to us. Blah blah blah. Oh. oh. No, I. Oh. <laughs> Oops, I missed one. He said something about it being splendid. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. Oh, that that's literally it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense that that's what it would be. Well, All right. we'll see now, it on another dad, so that's fine. Okay, so I, we need to start it from here, I think, because yes. these are his. These are Craig's kids. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Hey, looks like Amanda's hanging out with Briar and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, Briar, think of a shape. Hazel, what's she thinking? Square. Briar. Star! We'll get it next time. Amanda leads in close to Briar and Hazel, lowering her voice. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're downplaying your psychic abilities, I want you to know that you can trust me. Heck, even think of me as the third twin. Amanda, that's a triplet. <laughs> you know, Dad, by the time I'm done with these kids, we're going to be finishing each other's... What? What? You oh, didn't sorry, finish your sentence. What are we going to be finishing? Each other's... Sentences! See? Third twin. I have to go. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh... I also have something for you. Oh, we've seen this before. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. 
Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, There's been times in my life where you were my only friend, like right now. <laughs> I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Jack, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture with me and Amanda. It's us. Kind of shocking. All our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Huh. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Yeah. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. Mm-hmm. It would be my honor. <laughs> Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. Oh. I glance over to the back of the yard where Craig is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go get ice cream. Oh, the Emmas are there too, actually, then. Mm, huh. I don't think they are. No, I don't think they are. No? She's oh, like, maybe they, oh, I guess they are. Yeah, because ice cream cake. Love you, Pops. No, I think they're going out for ice cream. Uh, maybe. Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Craig as the last guests make their way out of the party. Bro. Bro. This reminds me of the parties we used to throw. Fewer keg stands, of course. Probably for the best. I don't want to get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. We can leave keg stands in the past. I, uh, taking this weekend to relax. This party was my first stop out of the express train from the relaxation station. Next stop is Napville. Pull into the Jack Concourse. I'd like to book a ticket oh. to J Napville as well. I might have to meet you halfway at eating food directly off of your own stomach town. We both giggle, but man, do I want to just pour some chips on my belly while I hang out in a hammock. <laughs> Craig, I'm glad you're making time for yourself. Oh. Me too. Stress is a funny thing, dude. You know, stress is what made that night in the... God, what it's if true. he's just blaming that night in the... <laughs> the woods on the stress. Oh no. Oh no, this is gonna end real badly. I didn't realize how overworked I was until we got away from the city. It's honestly just as destructive as binge drinking every night and eating burritos off of the floor. I guess we need to get out of the city more often then. Craig kicks his leg over the side of the bench and leans onto me, lying down on my lap. I run my fingers through his hair. You're looking for balance. I admire that. I'm trying to not feel guilty about doing things for myself. It's a process. And it's going to take me some time to figure it out. I might need your help, bro. Craig, I'll be your bro till the day I die. And if being your bro means forcing you to take care of yourself, then I'll happily oblige. Craig looks up at me, smiling. Nice. Bro. That means so much to me. Craig sits up and pulls me into a kiss. Bro. Oh. <laughs> we both laugh. <laughs> you and me, we're gonna be alright. My god. <laughs> the bros. Over and over. And there we are. So. Jesus. Uh, yeah, that is one of the endings. That is the Craig ending. Uh, I guess next time. We're good. Oh my god, I forgot how fast this goes when you just hold down <laughs> the button. <laughs> oh, you're the best pops, Amanda. Look at you. I Why know. Why your underwear still for that picture? Why wouldn't I be? Oh, and well, we get the Craig pin up. There we go. Bam. That's pretty cool. 
Mm-hmm. So do we actually have two pinups or did it not save the other one? I'm curious. Uh, I, it should save it on the main screen. That's what I thought. So, Real quick. Yeah, so gallery. You go to gallery. Oh, yep. it didn't save the other one. Even though we technically got it. That's fine. We'll have all of them by the end of this. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to go back a little bit. This has been the plan all along. So I will load it from dad book, dad book, this one. Welcome. Yeah. You Cause the other one's that. Craig dad, date three. So this is the one you need to. Yep. Yeah. And so instead of doing Craig, we're going to move on to Matt next time. And we're going to be doing all of his dates and we're just going to keep doing this. We will skip Damien, do Hugo and Joseph, and then we'll save Damien for absolute last. Uh, Since just we've to done see his the, already. We've already done his, so we're not actually going to do all of Damien. We're just going to have probably an episode of showing the Amanda bad ending and the party uh, if you do all the double dates and then end with Damien. So I think that's the plan. Maybe Sounds we'll like do a good the, plan to me. Yeah, maybe we'll do their super creepy ending or super creepy thing uh, in that episode too, because I don't know how much time <laughs> it'll all take. Anyways, yeah. I'm going to make a save right here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye. I just realized I said I there and not we. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. That's, I see how it is. No.